we are experiencing a powerful grace tonight in this teaching. Very powerful. I want to thank all of my partners. Thank you so much for sowing into this ministry. Thank you so much for honoring me. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to share these broadcasts. And also, thank you for celebrating my birthday month, October. One of the best months of the year because of the portals that open up in October. And because uh, we are in 2023. Uh, October the 3rd, like the Spirit of God on the midnight of October the 2nd, the Spirit of God told me to declare to you that we are in 2023. So we're already in this new year. So it shows you that we have an advantage in knowing things. Thank you so much for honoring me on my birthday. This is my birthday month, and this is a very special year for us. And as you're listening to this, I'm really going to spark a fresh anointing so that you can flow in this throughout all this week. You know, um, practicing the prophetic is real, is real electrifying because what you'll have to start to do is recognize that the Lord made your soul to hear him all the time. And hearing the voice of God is going to be an arena of your life where you develop self-control and self-restraint because you have to think about it. Why aren't everybody hearing God correctly? Now, you know, you meet people that say they hear God, but they be lunatic, right? So why aren't there a lot of people that hear God correctly? So what is the, what's the status quo to this? Because God's voice, it, he speaks within you and it goes against where you are in your sensuality in the moment. So let me just show you this. You at a bar. Man said, oh, you have an opera here? Oh, look at this little bar over here. In your mind, you're like, oh, this cracker talking to me. What? You understand I'm gorilla unit, but it proceeds. Yeah, I said, little bar here. In your mind, you're like, the Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to mess with, boy. And the voice of God within you says, ignore him, walk out. But the sensuality says, no, this is not racism. I need to make a point. See, the voice of God is going against the sensuality in the moment. The same way Jesus is appearing to Peter, the sensuality says that there's water. No man can walk on water. When have I ever seen a man walk on water? But Jesus is saying, come. You notice the voice of God is saying completely opposite, is talking different than the sensuality. The sensuality carries knowledge that you have already been acquainted with. So let me show you this. Your sensuality already knows what it could do because it has knowledge. You know if you jump, you come down. But imagine the Spirit of God said, you're about to fly. I'm about to take you somewhere. The voice of God is going against the sensuality. The same way, look at Ezekiel. He's asking him, can these bones live? The sensuality is saying, nah, this is like full-blown death. This is like full-blown death, Jesus. But the voice of God is saying, prophesy to the bones. 
I'm going against your sensuality, Ezekiel. See the voice of God, the same way with Jonah. Jonah is looking at Nineveh. I don't like Nineveh. Nineveh get on my nerves. They need to be punished. And God says, go and tell them to repent. The sensuality of Jonah is they deserve to be punished. But the voice of God is, I know that they deserve to be punished, but I'm going to send you to them to stop the punishment. If they heed you, they'll stop the punishment. I know that they deserve to die, but if they obey your word, it stops the death. You notice the voice of God goes against sensuality. It goes against where you are in your senses currently. When people are depressed, the voice of God is not angling the depression. That's why you notice, remember I told you this one time, have you ever noticed that when people are depressed, they'll even get angry at you if you encourage them? Say, no, I already, I already heard that. I already, I. They don't even want to hear it because it's a demon. You ever met somebody that got angry at you because you told them something good? Ah, you know, this good message. Ah, I don't want to hear it. It's a demon. The demon doesn't want to hear the gospel. The voice of God goes against your senses. Now, let me say this. Uh, for you to practice the prophetic and hearing God speak inwardly to you, you should practice asking him questions about himself. Most people go to God in prayer about themselves. They go to God in prayer about what they want to accomplish. They go to God in prayer about what are their grievances and what are their nuisances and what are their bothersome moments in life. But people rarely go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, are you okay? Are you doing okay? How are you doing? When someone goes to God in prayer, asking him about him, they're practicing the prophetic. Remember, Numbers chapter 12 says that Moses was the most humblest man in all the earth. But if we dive deeper into this, look at what Moses told the Lord when the Lord was um, giving him the initiation, the, the mission. He said, Lord, I don't want to go anywhere without your presence going with me. Now, let's detect what Moses is really saying here. He's saying, Lord, I don't want to do anything with my body just because I'm called to do it. I want you to be in approval of all of my movements, even if I'm in my calling. Make sure that I, I'm being approved by you, even in my calling. While I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I want your presence to go with me so I can know that I'm doing it correctly, that you're not angry at me even when I'm in my calling. Moses said, I will not 
go unless your presence go with me. He's saying my victory is not in the fact that I have army. My victory is not that we have swords or we have armor. My victory is in that you are accompanying me, accompanying me all the time. Now, I want you to look at this. Moses was placing a demand on God's presence, which means that he didn't want to hurt the Holy Ghost. Now, look at how God is speaking to Moses about everything. God tells him, go to Pharaoh. God tells him, go this route. God says, I'll, I'll take you to the Red Sea. God brings him out with large money. Look, financial anointing flowing through Moses. Look at all the abilities, miracle signs and wonders flowing through Moses. God is speaking to Moses face to face, telling him, come on a mountain and we're going to talk to each other. But how, what's the origin of this? Moses is concerned about God, not himself. The, the more it less becomes about you and it becomes about Jesus, the more the prophetic anointing sits on an individual. Now you know why in Revelation it says that, uh, it talks about the, the spirit of prophecy and aligning it with the testimony of Jesus. You notice the testimony of Jesus is Jesus' testimony. So it's Jesus' life. So the spirit of prophecy is, 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 is in that when Jesus' testimony is going forth. Not even your own. But that Jesus is able to live out his life through you. And that's what Apostle Paul was saying that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, in the power of his resurrection. You know, this is about Jesus. Then he said, I'm crucified with Christ, Galatians 2.20. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I live, but Christ liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh is by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me. The last part. Now look at this. Look at what Apostle Paul is saying. I'm living the life of Jesus, which means I'm living out his testimony. So now we know why Apostle Paul has such a strong prophetic anointing on him. To the degree he was able to give prophetic order and he said, if one prophet is standing and another prophet has a word, let that one prophet be silent and let that other prophet speak for God is not the author of confusion. Now you know why Apostle Paul has so much wisdom even about prophetic operation. He knew how the prophetic work because he was also a man that made Jesus his aim. Say, I, I don't want to know nothing amongst you, but Christ and him crucified. Well, he's saying, I want to magnify the crucifixion of Christ because this is what I did to myself to unlock myself. When he said to know Christ and him crucified, what he's saying is when I imitated Christ being crucified, I found who I am. When I took on Christ being crucified, that's when I had power over my members. When I understood Christ being crucified, that's when I had boldness in the midst of adversity and in the midst of persecution. When I chose Christ being crucified as my focus, as my study, this is where I had accessibility to angels, blessing, riches, wealth, wisdom, knowledge, faith. All of it was in Christ and him crucified. So practicing the prophetic is where you start to take the voice that you have to talk to God about your care for him. When you start talking to God about your care for him, 
he places the prophetic anointing on you. Remember, the Lord made you to care for him. He made you to be concerned about him. He made you to think about his problems, his issues, his life, his needs, his desires. And when you start talking to him in that accord, you inspire him. You spark his conversation. And he starts talking to you even about random stuff because he wants to be your buddy because he sees that you're sincere. How much more? Um, look, at, look at anybody. Why do people open up their self to someone because they deem the person harmless? They believe that when you utter your secret to that person that they are trustworthy that they could be harmless. Well, guess what happens? When God sees your care for him, he sees your harmlessness, that you mean him no harm. So he pours out his spirit on you and talks with you. Because you have expressed your harmlessness in your care for him. When you start asking the Lord about his day, you say, Lord, did you have a good day? He talks. You learn his voice by asking the right questions. And then when, when, when he says, don't leave the house tonight, you'll hear him because you're already in the flow of the rhythm of his voice. Now, I, I want you to always hear me. God's voice is so powerful when he speaks within you that it, affect, it affects your blood cells. Your bones recognize God's voice. When God made your makeup of your body, there's encryptions of his voice in your body. That's why Jeremiah was saying that his word is like fire shut up in my bones. Jeremiah had an encryption of God's voice inside of his bones. So remember what God said, I made you a prophet before. You ever prophesied? Before you even showed up according to natural, I had already made you a prophet. Now think about this. God is telling him, I already made you a prophet. Now, where did God hide the prophetic? It was encrypted all in his bones, in his body, even in his physicality. When God made Adam, his physicality was able to comprehend God's voice. Now watch this here. Now you understand why after he sinned, he hid. Now, do you know what to hide means? To take the body and attempt to disappear it from God. Why is he taking his body? Because the body was already carrying the encryption that it was encrypted in his body, God's voice. So, so even when he sinned, he could feel God's voice saying, So he tried to run with the body. The body was hearing God say. And so since even when God says, Adam, where art thou? Adam's. Because now God is talking outwardly, was already talking inwardly. And there is a climax. There's a whole earthquake, a collision, a wreck, a bumper to bumper. 
of God's encrypted voice. When God made a woman, when he made a man, inside of your physical body, God's voice for your life is already inside of your body. Do you know that there's words in your elbow? You never heard this teaching ever, ever, ever. It's brand new. The father has appointed this moment to talk. When God made your neck, there was words inside of your neck that your neck was supposed to turn to look here and turn to look there and turn to. When God made your eyes, there was words in your eyes. Now, you know, I keep saying this. Jesus said, anoint your eye with eye saw. How could I anoint my eye? The anointing is really the word of God, the information of God coming to you. So imagine if you could anoint the eye, that means that the eye could be a carrier of words. God has an alphabet in your body. Your body has an alphabet that's invisible from God. The ABC of your movements, the ABC of your words is inside of you. Everything that you were supposed to do, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, attract money, live in wealth, live in prosperity. It's all encrypted in your body. God told Abram, leave your father's house. You know why? Because that means that his body could now fulfill the word that was encrypted in it. As long as he was in his father's house, the words that God had hid in his elbows, his hands, his fingers, his neck, his ears, his eyes, his nose, his teeth, his mouth, his chin, his shoulders, his biceps, his hips. Now you understand, Jacob, God was wrestling with him through that Elohim angel. The angel represented God. That's why in some ways they can say God wrestled with, with Jacob because the angel was a God angel. But his hip got touched. The Bible said that he walked with this awkward appearance walk, a limp, there was a word encrypted in his hip bone that even when Jacob did the will of God, he was still walking with a limp. He became wealthy and still was walking with a limp. He lived in prosperity and still was walking with a limp. He was doing what God told him to do and still was walking with a limp because the word was made manifest in his hip bone. Apostle Paul said, I have an infirmity and you, you all receive me as an angel of God despite my infirmity. That means Apostle Paul had a physical infirmity when he walked. You see a walking, a physical infirmity. And he said, you receive me as an angel of God despite my infirmity. Apostle Paul was saying, I have this encrypted in my bones. And then he told the Lord, take this away from me. The Lord said, I'm not taking it away from you. My grace is sufficient for you. My power made known in your weakness. What Jesus is saying, I already put my word here. And though you see it manifesting as an infirmity, it's my word. As you can see how the voice of God works. Here he is talking to you right now. Even when we are on these broadcasts, the voice of God talks to you all the time. I am the voice of God. His voice 
affects your choice to do what you normally do. Wherever your decisions have become comfortable, that's where the voice of God challenges you. Wherever the normal reaction that you always have is present, that's where the voice of God challenges you. David is a warrior. He always has his way and he always kills successfully. And now he's dealing with Saul and the voice of God is saying, you can't kill Saul. Imagine the voice of God is telling him something that goes against his power and his authority. He already is an expert and a genius at killing his opposition. And now the voice of God is saying you can't kill him. You can't use this ability that you know how to do oh so well. You can't do it with him. The reason why we don't have many people hearing the voice of God, because when you listen to the voice of God, you will be put in situations where it look like you're losing. Whether you're losing with a person or just losing in life. Jesus is the voice of God at the cross and they're laughing at him and he doesn't say to anyone, do you know I could, I could take your tongue out your mouth right now? You want a piece of me? I'll see you in the afterlife. He says nothing. Jesus is showing you how the voice of God goes against your power, your willpower, what you could do, what you normally do, the voice of God will always take you into a challenge with your normality. And this is why many people don't obey the voice of God because the thrill of having your way is still present. The secret to always having your way is you lose your way. And when you lose your way, you even become dissatisfied in having your way. Why do you think people are suicidal? They had their way all their life. They did what they want. You ever seen somebody say, you know, I'm just going to end it all. I can't take this no more. They're dissatisfied. They're unhappy with what their willpower. They're unhappy with what they permitted. They're unhappy with their experiences. They're unhappy with what they were opened up to do. And when the voice of God talks to you, he takes you out of having your way. That's what he does. And things that are familiar to you, the voice of God will say, don't watch that. Don't heed that. Don't view that. Saints, the voice of God will have you do things that people will look at you and say that you're a bad person. The sons of thunder, I think that's James and John, if I'm not mistaken. The sons of Zebedee, I believe. I keep telling you they're inside of the boat and their dad is right there with them and Jesus calls them away. The voice of God calls them away and the Bible says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long on the earth. And here, the voice of God is saying, come. Away. The 
Jesus said in the gospels, if you love mother and father more than me, you're not worthy of me. And if you love son and daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. You're not. You're not supposed to love even your children more than Jesus. You're not supposed to love your parents more than Jesus. That's why you'll need wisdom and understanding because sometimes people will just try to give you the word. You know you got to honor your mother and father. You know you got to honor your mother and father. You know you got to love your children. You know you got to love your children. So why would Jesus tell me if I love mother and father more than me, I'm not, you know, worthy? Why would it say if you love? So if there's no technique to the scripture, why would Jesus utter this? Obviously, I will have a test with the children. Obviously, I will have a test with the parents. And if I miss the test, the Bible says you love them more, you're not worthy of me. When the voice of God talking to you, you'll have to leave people. And the truth is, you can't give a damn about their well-being. You can't be checking up on them either. Leave them and go follow Jesus. Don't be up there telling some, oh, you know, I'm going to stay in contact. I'm going to stay in touch. No, that's not how it go. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, let him take up his cross, and let him follow me. If any man will come after me, denying yourself is not supplying yourself. It's not you saying, well, I'll give a portion and I'll keep the rest. I'll stay here and I'll stay there. It means that I'm fully in and what God wants. Hearing the voice of God, it will take patience because many people deceive themselves. They're not hearing from God and they can't recognize that they're not hearing from God because number one, they're unwilling to be patient. When people step into deception, they start moving fast, very fast in their choices, very fast in what they do. The easiness of hearing God's voice, you simply ask him questions. Tell him, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, is this how you want me to do this? Lord, is this where you want me to do this? Start asking him questions. If you really are serious about having accuracy with God's voice, ask him how he's doing. Say, Lord, how do you feel about me? Am I okay? Am I doing it your way? Are you pleased with my life? Lord, can you show me what I'm not seeing? Lord, I make myself available to know whatever you want me to know. See whatever you want me to see. Hear whatever you want me to hear. And tell the Lord exactness. You tell him, I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to trick myself. You tell the Lord, I want the finances you have for me. I want the health you have for me. I want the life according to your image, the image of God. I want the image of God life. The only way a person could hear God accurately is if they know how to talk to him accurately. You remember, Reaping what you sow is also in the realm of conversation. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
if you so correct in your conversation, you'll reap correctness in your conversation with God. You have to ask him the right questions. How would you like to walk into someone's house? You ignore them. You don't greet them. And you sit on their couch. You still say nothing to them. And then you start telling them about all your problems. I need you to fix this. I need you to help me here. I need you to do this here. You need to do this for me. When you going to do this, Lord? How could you do this to me? How could you let this happen to me? And imagine you go into somebody's house and start talking to them. How could you let this happen to me, Cynthia? How could you do this to me, Cynthia? How would you do this to me, Cynthia? Cynthia! Ah! You expect Cynthia to be excited to talk with you? You didn't greet her. You didn't say hello. You didn't even acknowledge her presence. You didn't even say she looked nice. And then you expect for Cynthia to look at you and be excited about solving all of your problems. That's how people deal with the Holy Ghost. You go where you want, do what you want, say what you want, look at what you want, Learn what you want. You learn what you want. Now, God don't be wanting you to learn all that that you learn, but you got accessibility. You got a phone. You got internet. You learn what you want. Do what you want. And then when life gets catastrophic, Then, now the petitions start going forth. This week, there's a new spirit that you have to converse with the Lord. There's a new spirit that you have to converse with the Lord. There's a new spirit that you have been given to converse with the Lord. And get to know him. Some of you are like the idea that you married to the Lord. But that's some BS. You don't know how to be married to the Lord. Number one, if you was truly married to the Lord, there's a lot of things that you do that you would not be doing because you would be submitted to your heavenly husband. The Holy Ghost will be ruling you. You're not operating as a married woman, as a married man. The truth. So let's get this in appropriation. Date the Lord. Because until he's in domination, that's not marriage. Date the Lord this week. And while you're dating him, the same way somebody makes sure, you know, when people are dating, they don't want to ask stuff that will offend the other person. They don't want to get in no arguments. They don't want to get into, they want to just be happy, you know. And sometimes people go through so much dating that when they, when they do ask questions, they ask hard questions because they're like, man, I ain't got no time to waste. But I'm saying when people are dating, they seek to impress the other person. Well, do that with the Lord. And date the Lord this week. And you know what? While you date the Lord, you'll discover the date of your promotions. You'll discover the date of your anointings. You discover the date of your healings. The date of your wisdom. You'll discover it. There'll be a discovery of mysteries. Saints, 
I want you to see this. I want you to see this. If you want to hear God all the time, clearly and literally, start talking to him as if you're hungry for his friendship. You want the friendship with you and him to be the strongest than Moses, stronger than anybody, that you want his voice to always be able to contact you even on things that you will deem is not what you would have picked off the jump. See, saints, um, many people will never do this. Many people will never do this. And people like to live life and just be blind and stay blind. But there will rarely be people that will say, Lord, this person here, what about them? What, what do you say about them? Lord, this, this here, what, what do you say about this? Many people don't do that. Many people go and go and go and go. And God is not there. God is not there. And if they're in conversation with God, if you're talking to your father in heaven, you will open up yourself to hear him audibly, literally all the time. And you won't be deceived. But you know what happens when people get deceived? They stop asking God questions. You can't tell me nothing. When any, and when any time somebody gets deceived, they stop asking God questions. They don't want to face him. They want to move, move, move. That's all they want to do. You'll never hear a deceived person go to the Lord and say, I'm going to wait right here for three weeks. I'm going to wait. I don't care if three weeks pass. I'm going to stay and I'm going to let you tell me and give me the interpretation. I'm going to let your voice dominate People don't do that. As you can see, when people go the route of evil, when they go the route of wrong, they don't face God in prayer. They don't. You'll never see someone that doesn't live the financial life. You'll never hear them say, Lord, if you want me to work, I'll work. Lord, if you want me to give up my place, I'll give up my place. Lord, if you don't want me to have this brand new car just bought, I, I, I'll send it back. Lord, if you don't want me to pay this place, you, you won't hear nobody say that. You know why? Because everybody just likes going and going and going and going. Lord, protect me as I go. Lord, preserve me as I go. Don't let, not, even if this not your will, just make sure that it stay in its proper place. Let, don't, don't let nothing backfire on me. People don't be talking to God correct. And saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. I don't live for anything I have. Everything I have, you know, I was thinking about it. Sometimes I go places and people start uh, wilding out over my vehicle. Or if I'm in a certain type of vehicle, they'll start wilding out. And I have to catch what they're doing. Because I don't have the same reaction that they have. In their mind, they're like, oh, this is the world. In my mind, it's like. I could, I could, I could walk. I don't mind walking. I don't mind walking. If I had to walk for the rest of my life, I wouldn't mind. If I have to give away anything that I possess, I wouldn't mind. I don't become connected to things because the day that the Spirit of God wants to do whatever he wants, this body will go right in the direction. Some of you all will need to recognize that. And then the wild thing is every time I say that, the Holy Ghost will be like. Because.
because some of you I need to catch. When God makes you wealthy, you're never supposed to love the wealth. Don't let it become you. I went to a place, uh, I think it was yesterday, where a white older lady walked up to me. She was a white older lady. She was like, you smell so good. And here's what she told me. She said, you make America beautiful again. I know she was a Republican. <laughs> I know she was a Republican. I wanted to tell her, make America great again. I know she was a Republican. You're not going to tell me she wasn't a Republican. She said, you make America beautiful. And that is later the first time I seen me in real life. Me and I never had no conversation. You know what she told me? And everybody, everybody where I was looked over. This is the first conversation. I, this, I, this lady ain't never seen me in this life. In person. She said, you make America beautiful. And she walked right away. Since when she walked away, it's like I heard that song. Do -do 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 -do. I need you. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> why, oh, why? I mature. I mature. I mature. I mature. Oh, I mature. And I mature. Since the lady said it loud and walked away. She walked away. You know, walked away. <laughs> walked away happy. Saints, I want you to see this. If you talk to the Lord like a friend, he'll be your friend. And that's where the prophetic anointing starts. You don't walk in the prophetic because you're trying to get to know people's business. You're trying to become famous. You walk in the prophetic because God's saying, I trust you. You love my voice. You love my friendship. So I'll send you to bring others to be my friend. 